In a few months, Sweden's minority government has managed to antagonize both Israel and the Arab world, while also angering business leaders at home as Foreign Minister Margot Wallström steadfastly pursues human rights and feminism. Wallström's agenda, and the criticism it has drawn, has exposed a struggle over Sweden's identity and whether it should become what some politicians call a moral great power, or prioritize security and an export-led economy. After Sweden cancelled a defence cooperation accord with Saudi Arabia last week over rights concerns, the Arab League condemned Wallström and blocked her from giving a speech in Cairo. Saudi Arabia recalled its ambassador from Stockholm, and hundreds of millions of dollars in business are threatened. Wallström, a former EU commissioner, promised a feminist foreign policy when her Social Democrats formed the coalition government last October. Since then, she has described the flogging of a liberal Saudi blogger as medieval, winning praise from many commentators for standing up to the kingdom. I won't back down over my statements on women's rights, democracy and that one shouldn't flog bloggers, Wallstrom said, referring to sentencing of Rafe Badai to 1,000 lashes. I have nothing to be ashamed of. But Sweden is the world's 12th biggest arms exporter. Its AAA-rated economy depends on brand exports from IKEA to H&M. With Russia also testing Sweden's air and submarine defences, this may be the wrong time to put human rights front and centre in foreign policy, her critics say. Sweden has a history of neutrality. But under the previous centre-right government it forged closer links with NATO, participating in military missions in Afghanistan and Libya, something Wallström has promised to tone down. The Saudi Defence Accord had helped Swedish firms to make 4.8 billion crowns, $567 million, in 2011 to 2014. Signed in 2005, it had been due for renewal in May. Much of what Sweden exports of high technology requires the various types of long term commitments, Wallström's centre right predecessor Carl Bild wrote in his blog. There is a real risk. The cancellation will hit Swedish interests, not only in Saudi Arabia itself. Diplomatic miscalculations. But the Saudi row may not have been Wallström's doing, and has brought accusations of diplomatic miscalculations by the squabbling coalition government. This is foreign policy played for a domestic gallery and it gives a strong impression of political mismanagement, said Frederick Eriksson, director of the Brussels-based ESIP think tank. Prime Minister Stefan Löfven, who worked for nearly two decades as a welder in the defence industry, was in favour of a revised Saudi deal. But this was vetoed by leftist Social Democrats and the Green Party, the junior partner that keeps him in power. With signs Löfven would give in to the Greens, more than 30 business executives published an open letter saying breaking the deal would jeopardise Sweden's reputation as a trade partner. They included fashion retailer H&M's main owner Stefan Persson and investor chairman Jacob Wallenberg. Social Democrats have traditionally been pragmatic in foreign policy, said Anna Weislander, deputy director of the Swedish Institute of International Affairs. So this may be about government personalities and coalition wrangling. It was not the only controversy. Wallström's first diplomatic move was to recognize the state of Palestine prompting Israel to recall its ambassador and angering the United States. Ironically, this championing of rights may have actually damaged Sweden's ability to punch above its weight. The first victim may be its ambition to win enough votes to be a rotating member of the UN. Security Council The Swedish brand, as a reliable partner who you can talk to, has been badly hurt, said Sven Herdman, a former Swedish ambassador to Moscow.